take a moment, um, as I mentioned in the chat. So if you can actually like click on three dots above your own video and just go ahead and rename it by adding your first and last name in your school. So for example, my name is Agnes Gagbo. I work at Cash and JQUS. Um, so I added that so that when, you know, if you add your name, we'll be able to let your career specialist know. And also you can network and see who's in this Zoom meeting. So we are at 3.05 and we are gonna get started on this resume webinar. Thank you all for joining us. This session is gonna be led by Ms. McDonald and myself. I'll let Ms. McDonald introduce herself to you. Hey everyone, I am Ms. McDonald. I work at the Burke. Um, thanks for joining us. Let's have some fun. Yes, it's gonna be a great session. So what we're going to do next, so, Let's just give you an overview of what we'll be doing today. First, we'll do a little icebreaker. Then we'll go over what the purpose is for a resume and the content of a resume. Ms. McDonald's gonna lead us through an activity. Um, and then we'll give you some tips and key takeaways on how to make a resume better, go over next steps, and answer any questions that you may have. So again, welcome to our session. Um, what we want you all to do is go ahead participate, engage with us in the chat room as well. Let us know your name again after, you know, you already added that to your video, but let everyone know your name, what school you go to, and what your dream career is. Um, we really want to know who's here and what you guys are interested in. All right. As you guys are doing that, we'll go right along in the webinar and tell you guys what the purpose of a resume is. So you can use your resume for a couple of things. Um, it's really great for you to be able to keep track of, you know, any work experiences that you've had, you know, where you've gone to school. If you've gone to, you know, more than one high school, you can add that. Any extracurricular activities that you've been participating in. So if you've been in debate club or a basketball team, if you're in an art program, um, you're doing maybe a whole bunch of different things while you've been in high school. This is an opportunity for you to actually collect everything on one paper or one document as to say like, this is what you've been doing. And you would use your resume to apply for jobs. That's usually the minimum requirement is to upload your resume. Colleges also like to look at your resume to see what you've accomplished, or you can use it as you know, a document where you can go back to and just remind yourself of things that you've done while you've been in high school. It's also helpful for those who are writing recommendation letters for you um, so that they might be able to highlight certain accomplishments that you have, you know, gone or accomplished, accomplishments that you've made um, while you've been in high school. So content of a resume. Um, you should have certain things, basically these three minimum things of your name, your education, and your skills. Those are things that we all have that we should definitely be able to allow, you know, employers to be able to reach us and know, you know, what level of education, you know, we've acquired. And then skills, everyone has skills, whether it be computer skills, language skills or personal skills. So those are the three minimum things. And then an objective is sort of an optional thing that you can have on your resume. Um, if you know that you're gonna use your resume specifically for retail jobs, you can add that on there. And then we can also you know, go over what that could look like. Um, if you have worked before, you can also add your work experience. It's highly encouraged. But if you haven't worked before, that's totally okay. You can add volunteer experience. So if you've done Walk for Hunger, um, if you've volunteered at Rosie's Place, anything like that, that's a great addition to have on your resume. If you have gone any honor roll or perfect attendance, that's something that you should consider adding. Um, any extracurricular activities, like we mentioned earlier, again, debate club, soccer team, any 
engineering programs that you've done, go ahead and add that interest. So if you're interested in healthcare, law, um, business, you can have that section as well. Any certifications that you've gotten, maybe you've done CPR training. Um, that's an example of what you can add to your resume as well. Now the references piece, you can have that. Um, you don't need to, but if you do decide to have references, that could be the second page. Um, and that you can have, you know, the name of the person who would be referring you, their contact information. That would be um, an optional addition to your resume. Usually if you're applying for a job, there is a section where they already asked for references. So don't feel that is um, required for the resume. So now Ms. McDonald is gonna lead us through a fun activity and I'll hand it over yes. to her. All right, so really quickly, um, just to go off of their certificates, I know that some people in technology classes are getting OSHA certified and other types of like Photoshop certifications and all that type of stuff. Make sure that you add that in, especially within the technology industry, because that's going to really uh, pop out to employers. Um, all right, so resumes are kind of dry. We know this, but they're really important. And when you make your resume, it's all about how you put down the information that you've done and all of the things, all of your skills, all of the things that you have in your back pocket that you can offer to employer. But the employer only looks at the resume for a pretty short amount of time. So this game is going to be a little like role play game where you guys are going to play the part of a hiring manager. So there's a new job at a brand new arcade and ent entertainment center that just opened up in Boston. It's a really big deal right next to the train station. People are really hyped up about it. And you're the hiring manager that's in charge of getting everyone together to start this staff and um, open up this store. So you have three resumes, but you can only hire one. And we're gonna show you the three resumes. Each resume, we're only gonna show for about 10, 15 seconds, okay? So look at the resume. It's three people that I'm sure you all know. Um, and in the chat box, or if you want to participate with your voice, you can do that as well. Um, let me know who you would hire, all right? So here are your three resumes. If you all are having a hard time seeing this, might be a little difficult to see. Um, the things you're looking for is kind of quick tidbits of how is it organized? What does it look like? Are there good skills? Are there things that you could use? Um, look at their information up top. All right, let's go to the next one. And the next one. Okay. So does everyone know how to use the hand raising function? You might not even need it. Um, let's do this. So in the chat box, write down the name of who you would hire. So just to remind you, the first one that you saw was LeBron James. The second one was Bad Bunny. And the last one was Zendaya. And if you need to see the, the resumes again, um, you can either say that or put it in the chat box. <laughs> Thanks. All right, we got one for LeBron James. Another for LeBron James. Nice, good. I'm rooting for Bad Bunny. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you like 30 more seconds. Everyone's saying LeBron James.
All right, so it looks like LeBron James is the one who got hired. Is there anyone who said that they would hire LeBron James that wants to say why they would hire them? Like, what about the resume do you think stood out about LeBron James, aside from the fact that it's LeBron James? His resume was appealing, okay? What made it appealing? Was it organized? Was it, um, did his skills really pop out to you? Did you look at it and think organized? All right, anyone else? Feel free to talk as well if you'd like. So someone also said his resume was professional and organized. Okay. I didn't choose LeBron James, but I thought his name was very decent. Who did you choose? I picked Bad Bunny. Nice. Why'd you pick Bad Bunny? Bad Bunny. I mean, why not? Okay, but look at the resume. Nah, nah I, thought, I thought it was, like, it was simple. It was well, like, put. I felt like it was more, like, straightforward. Okay. It wasn't, like, through, you know, it wasn't making you look through a lot of stuff. It was just straightforward. All right. You're dead. And did anyone choose Zendaya? I think there was one person who said Zendaya. It was our boss. Our boss said Zendaya. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So that was a, just a quick little game. And the thing about when you look at resumes, thank you all for participating. Um, Obviously, LeBron got the job, so if an arcade did open up, that'd be pretty sick that you could go and see LeBron James at the arcade. Um, but when you're looking at resumes, the thing that you're looking for the most is how it's organized and the information that is in, in that structure. So there's multiple different ways that you can do it. You can do it how Zendaya did it, where she puts a, a line under each category to kind of break up to the viewer's eye the different categories. Or you could do it like LeBron James, where he just lists the categories and then goes straight into um, straight into what it what the information is for that specific area. The most important thing, especially since you all are in high school, is to make sure that you are putting your skills down. Every skill that you have that is the most important part because you can't be expected to have already had a job since your job, your number one job is being a student. Um, so we'll go into those, those areas more. And since you all already have resumes, the one thing that I always do, even still to this day, is I'll look back at my resume and I'll add in things as things come up. So if I have done a different volunteer thing, I'll add that in. Or if I feel like there's a new and better skill that I'd rather put in than something else, then I'll add that in. Um, so when you're creating your resume, one good trick is to kind of take a step away from it and then look back at it really quickly and think of it as if you're a hiring manager, if you looked at your resume, would you hire yourself? So that was just a little game to, to get you guys kind of thinking a little bit. Awesome, thank you. Also, if you have any questions over the course of this workshop, feel free to add that to the chat and we'll answer those questions at the end. So tips to make your resume better, things to consider. Always make sure that you know, you're using a professional email. So you wanna avoid using emails like hotmama99 at yahoo.com. You know, use your, your name, your first, last name um, at Gmail or Yahoo or whichever um, email address you're using. Um, also keep in mind, you may not want to use your school email because at some point, you know, when you guys graduate, you're not gonna have access to that email. Um, so use a professional email that um, you would be able to refer to. Wait, is it, is it good to like use uh, like a personal email? I mean, is it good to have yeah. a personal email and a professional? Yes, you can feel free to do that. Um, I know I have, two emails. Um, one has like my first name, that last name at Gmail. I also have like my work email. So it's fine to have your personal too. If let's say you do have um, 
one that doesn't include your name, maybe for friends or family, for photos, things like that, that's totally fine. All right, All right. and then um, add your cell phone number. So if you have a cell phone number, please add that. Um, if you don't, if you use like maybe your home number or phone number, that's fine. Um, but we recommend prioritizing putting your own cell phone number on your resume. Also, please make sure you proofread your resumes. Make sure that there's no you know, spelling errors, grammatical errors. Um, make sure the format is consistent as well. So just even looking back at Zendaya's resume, um, you can see the titles of each section was the same, bold, um, capitalized. You can see that the font is all the same throughout, same color, um, except the email address, which is fine. Um, so make sure the format is consistent, it's organized and clean looking. Um, you might wanna use like Times New Roman or Cambria for the font. Um, also make sure that in your resume when you're describing, you know, let's say the work that you've done, that you're not just saying the job description, you're saying what you actually did at that job. So as you can see here in the work experience, you know, she's saying, she maintained this, provided this, um, which goes into the next point is that you always wanna start it with an action verb. Um, start each line with you know, a verb that describes what you did. Um, your resume is an opportunity to brag about yourself. Um, so don't feel like there are things that you need to omit. Um, at the same time, you do wanna try to keep your resume to one page. Um, so you're going to be modifying it as you go along, but you can have a master resume um, that you can refer to and make changes um, over the course of your experiences. Um, use power words, use words that are going to describe your strengths and what you can bring to the table um, that jobs can look at. And also make sure that as you're adding, let's go back to this example, um, let's see here. So you wanna make sure that it's in reverse chronological order. So you always wanna have you know, what you did more, most recently and then you know, what you did um, in the past. So the, the first one is the job that you're doing right now or maybe the last summer job you had and then whatever you had two years ago. All right. So Ms. McDonald's gonna go over key takeaways I have another question before I start. Sure. So if, I, if you were um, interviewing me and I had my resume, would you look forward for, would you look at more of me coming straight forward, like telling the stuff I did or more like a descriptive type of order where I describe everything I did? Or do you, would you like something that's just straightforward? Yeah, so you want your resume to be, like you said, more straightforward, very concise. So let's say you worked at Target you would want to give me like maybe three or four points about what you did, you know, as a sales associate at Target. Um, you want to be concise in that way, but you want to make sure that you do incorporate like a good description of like what you did there. So it's kind of a combination of both, but the main goal is to be concise because they're going to glance at your resume, you know, for a couple seconds and move on to the next person. So you want to get them that information in a clean um, and organized way. All right, thank you. You're welcome. It's a bit kind of like um, how I see resumes. It's, it's kind of like a trailer to the movie where you're, you're leaving, you're giving the employer a sense of what it is that you've done in the past and what you can present if you're hired there, but you're not telling them everything. So you're giving them a little trailer of what it is that you have to offer, and then the interview is where you get to expand. So uh, that's where the concise breakdown, you still wanna say what you did, but very concise so that they have questions. They wanna call you in for an interview. They wanna hear more about who you are and what you've done and what you can provide for the company. That's kind of my, it's like an elevator pitch is how I see it. Mm -hmm. um, so, some other we also have a great question which we're going to get to more questions um right after this but just some really um quick takeaways from this is to add all of your experiences which was actually one of the questions so maybe i'll just an ask answer that 
on that. Um, but with your experiences, you want it to be in chronological order. So the most recent thing is up top and then you work your way down. When you start getting more and more jobs, you might want to think about having a master resume, which is one that is just for you. And you can keep documentation of every single job that you've ever had, and then choose which jobs feel the most um, the most important for whatever job you're applying for now. Because as you get older, you're going to have so many jobs that it might not make sense to put that stop and shop that you worked at for like six months anymore. Um, like for me, I have two resumes. I have a a resume that I used for this job that I use as um, my professional resume and I have a restaurant resume, but my master resume is everything. Um, so feel free to look at your experiences and start taking things away once you get older and you have more things to add or you feel like bigger accomplishments have been made. Um, that goes for volunteer experience, for school awards, sports teams, clubs, everything. Um, Keep track of what you did. That's kind of the master resume. Just noting it down can really help. Um, and make sure to highlight your skills. Your skills are the most important thing because that's what you are coming into the company with and that's what you can um, add into whatever might be missing in the current company. Um, job details are something that is, um, you want, you want to say your highlights or your skills in a way that is not just saying what you did, but kind of dressing it up a little bit. So if you worked at Stop and Shop, you might be on the floor stocking shelves. And rather than just saying, like, put items on the shelf, you say something like, um, maintain order and structure of items on the floor. Something Thing like that just to kind of add a little bit more um, juice to what you're saying um, and then filling space with extracurricular activities and passion projects volunteer experience all of that type of stuff is really important so if you are a high school student currently that does not have a job or has never had a job before it's okay again no one's expecting you to have that work experience yet but there's a lot of things that you're doing that correspond directly to the workforce. So if you're part of Build On, that's something that you should definitely add in. If you've done a lot of volunteer projects and you're engaged in your community, add that in. Make sure that you're really showing who you are and what you've done because that's gonna make you a standout candidate. Um, so now we're gonna get to the Q&A, which we actually already have a few. Um, so the way this is gonna work, is um, Agnes, maybe if you want to just answer this question right now, just because it's right off of the slide. Yeah. Someone asked, if you have various volunteer experience, do you have to describe what you did or just list the places you volunteered at? So it depends, right? So if you have a lot of volunteer experience, and um, maybe you have your, you've exceeded one page already, you're at, you know, a page and a half, you can actually shorten it um, and just say, you know, where you volunteered and the year. So let's say it was Walk for Hunger. I would have that bullet, say Walk for Hunger, parentheses, 2019, close parentheses. So that's how I would do that for volunteering. For work experience, you can actually shorten, like let's say you have five bullets describing what, you know, you did at that job, you can make it into three. Um, you can even maybe combine um, those, maybe two, two of the bullets um, to make it one. Um, but you can also, like we said, make it concise, maybe pick the, the top three things that you want to highlight that you did at the job. And then if your resume is longer than a page, how do you make it fit? Um, so one, you can actually follow up with your career specialist or myself or Ms. McDonald. Um, and we can connect you to who your career specialist is, but it goes back to really trying to make your resume concise. So um, there, if your volunteer experience section 
actually has more like descriptions, you can sort of take that out and make it um, simpler, just where you volunteered in the year. Um, there are other things that you can do as well, um, such as making the format of the page or the layout of the page different. Um, sometimes making it narrow actually gives your page more space. Even changing the font, making the font a little bit smaller, um, but still readable um, is another way you can make it a page. Any other questions? There's another question that says, if you don't have any work experience, do you delete the section entirely or do you just write work experience and leave it blank? If you do not have any work experience, do not include that on your resume. That is totally okay. You do not have that. You do not need to have that heading on there. Um, you can definitely highlight other things that you've been doing. So that is totally fine. Just omit the work experience part. Any other questions? And um, while you guys are thinking of questions, um, next steps would be, you know, make sure, like you take away some of these tips and update your resume, review it, you know, save it to your Google Drive so that you are able to share it with your career specialist or um, use it for applications. Um, sometimes they have that function where you can upload, um, you know, your Google Doc resumes. Um, can you oh can you put um internships as a job experience like if you internship for something yeah so that's great if you did an internship definitely add that to your work experience um so you're gonna for example we can actually go back to the example so you can see um let's see so i mean if you look at this one although you know this is more so under work experience, um, then do like a swap and shop. But let's say this was actually an internship. Let's say it was something else like, you know, someone worked at Children's Hospital. Um, this would go under work experience. Um, so you would say Children's Hospital, you would say when, you would say your job title was probably intern. Um, maybe you want, might wanna be specific and say, you know, operations intern or, um, general surgery intern, and then the location and what you did in that internship. Okay. So it would all go in the same section. I have a follow up to that question. Yes. If you had an internship that was unpaid, where would you put that on your resume? So if you had an unpaid internship, you can still put that under work experience because you took the time to, you know, learn a trade or learn um, a new work. You did work actually. Um, so that's definitely transferable. It doesn't necessarily have to be a paid job for it to be considered work experience. Um, with that being said, you have to be able to differentiate what work experience is and what volunteer experience is. So work experience, at least it's like something related to, you know, a professional job um, that you maybe aspire to do or um, could, it could potentially lead to a paid job. Okay, we have some more questions. Um, do you... Do we need to include a short summary about ourselves on the resume? So that goes back to having the objective right at the top of your resume. So if you feel like you want to use your resume for a specific type of jobs, so let's say you're only applying for business internships, then feel free to add that. Um, I, For me personally, I don't have a short summary on my resume. Um, sometimes, you know, if you want to, I haven't done that before, but it's definitely something that I've seen and it can be helpful if you're applying for a certain type of job, certain industry jobs. Next question is, do you need to include your interests? Is this necessary? It is not necessary, um, but it can be added. You can make it um, 
extracurricular activities and interests. So that can be its own section if you do have extracurriculars that you want to list and then also add, you know, what those interests are. Um, but it's for, let's say you're, you've done the PIC application, right? And some of you, you know for sure that you want to work in real estate. Um, you might want to highlight that in your resume so that whoever um, your resume is being sent to will know that this is a specific interest that you have. Um, what type of um, mistakes do you not want to do when you're like making a resume? Like what are the mistakes that you don't want to like try to make when you're making your own resume when you're starting off a resume? That's a uh, great question. So let's actually look at, um, let's look at LeBron James resume here. Um, when we look at this, it would, I would be interested to know if there's anything you guys see here that could be improved. So for example, let's see. Overall, this looks like a decent resume. I will say, and Ms. McDonald, feel free to chime in here. Um, I think because this person hasn't worked before, they made the section academic experience, which, um, which is fine. I think typically for me, I would probably say that, you know, being a part of scholar athletes, maybe that might go under extracurricular activities. Um, but there's nothing really like big mistakes here. So let me actually, do you see any big mistakes here? I actually don't. Um, maybe I would uh, make go to notes. Bad Bunny. Yeah. Bad Bunny is the one. Yeah. So looking at this one, this is a better example. Um, some things that could be improved is the address. Um, so like, for example, Beach Point, this person lives at 34 Beach Point Place. So I would make the you know, street name capital. I'd also want to like label the phone number um, so that, you know, whoever's reaching me knows how to contact me. And let's see, they have that they go to a school at BAA. Um, they put 2021. What does that mean? Maybe be specific and say class of 2021. Um, skills, they can actually like list what skills you know, they have rather than writing sentences. So, you know, add computer skills. I think they're missing that. And I, I know we all have computer skills that we can know. Maybe if they speak a language or so, they can add that. Um, personal skills, then being creative. Um, another way to say super nice is saying, you know, strong interpersonal skills. Um, that means like they're able to build relationships and work with people. Um, so there are other ways to make that section better. And then with the work experience section, the content is there, right? Um, let's see. The formatting is a little bit off. Um, that could be better. So for example, where you see, I mean, it is not in reverse chronological order, which is good, but Boston could, like the location of where they put Boston on the resume, like it's not aligned. It's not straight. It's not the same. Mm -hmm. Same thing with volunteer experience. Um, they could have put, let's see, so they said sometimes I donate things to savers or give things to my younger siblings. Is that really volunteer experience though? Um, unless they say, they might wanna put that in a different way, but you wouldn't necessarily say giving things to your younger siblings is volunteering, but if you take care of your younger siblings that, and you get, or you take care of other kids, um, that's something to add into activities. If you're paid to take care of other kids, um, that could go in, under work experience. Um, but if you're donating things to savers, you may not want to put that under volunteer experience. 
um, that might not be included. But that's something you could actually mention in the interview. So we have a few more questions that I, are really good questions. Um, would you only include the things you've done from ninth to 12th grade? Yes, so we encourage you all as high school students to just include things that you've done in high school. Yes. And when you if you volunteered from, for, sorry, when sorry. you move on from high school, you can keep what you've done in high school. And then um, as you're building, you know, your maybe college experience, or if you're in trade school or something else, you can start to chip away and take things that you've done in high school off. Um, but you can keep it on your master resume. But on the one pager, you'll start to take those off. Sorry, Ms. McDonald. What was the other question? Um, if you volunteered for two months at a place, would you write it as March 2019 to April 2019 or March to April 2019? So I would write it as March 2019 to April 2019. Just because if you just put March dash April 2019, I don't know what year you started in March. So I could, it could be March 2017. I wouldn't really know for sure. So just to be clear, you would put March 2019 to April 2019. And then it says for the education tab, would you include any AP courses or just the school in your graduation year? You can do that. I've seen resumes that highlight. Um, so let's say, let's go back here. Um, so like for example, this student, they just have, you know, their school and their graduation year, but then they might um, put in italics courses include AP history, AP biology, um, or geometry honors. So you do have the option to include that. If you also have a GPA that's higher than a 3.0, you can feel free to add that as well. Also, if you're in any dual enrollment, definitely add that in. Um, that's a huge thing. Also, um, can you have two of this, like two two things that you like done, like something that you've done, and like you learned something from it? Can you put like education? Say you volunteered, like you babysit, so, like you babysit somebody's kid, and like you learned from that experience. Can you put something like you learned from it on like educational? Like, edu like an educational side, like can you put it on like the educational side so of it? If you did something related to childcare and you learn from that experience, I wouldn't add that to education. I would actually add that to, if it was paid, I would put that in work experience. If it was not paid, you could put that under volunteer experience or extracurricular. Uh, actually, let's put that under extracurricular um, if it's, not paid, but it's something that it's a big part of your life. You definitely want to put that um, in your resume. So if it's paid, you're watching other kids, put in work experience. If it's not, put in extracurricular activities. It's also something you could definitely add to skills. I think skills is a big place to put what you've learned, which actually there's a question about that too. What would you write in the skills tab? Okay. So in the skills tab, definitely want to have at least like computer skills. So if you know how to use Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, um, if you've worked with Photoshop, if you know how to code, if you know how to use any of the Google programs, you want to add that. Um, I, I know some of you have at least, you know, one or two of those skills. Some of you have five, six a number of computer skills. So you want to make sure you highlight that because um, employers are curious to know, you know, what computer skills have you developed. And this is also a good time if you realize, okay, I don't know how to use, you know, Microsoft Word. You can start to think about um, or talking to, you know, a computer teacher at your school to see what are some ways you can develop some of those computer skills. Um, language, if you speak um, more than one language, you can say you're bilingual and, you know, Spanish and English. That would be a great addition um, to add. If you speak three languages, 
please add that. If you don't speak another language, that's totally fine. Um, you can just omit that. Um, and then add personal skills. So um, you all have, you know, developed skills um, that like it would be an opportunity for you to brag about what you can bring to that job or to that school you're applying to. So those three sections should be included in the skills tab. Um, make sure you're also, for the computer and language, make sure you're describing where you are with that skill. So here um, they said they're proficient. Um, so they're good with you know, Google, but they're advanced. So they're more than proficient with Photoshop. Um, but if you're not proficient or advanced, maybe you have a basic knowledge of something, then you want, you're going to want to describe that level of proficiency with that skill that you are describing. Can, if, can you also leave something on pending? Like, say you're doing something, but like, you're leaving it on pending. Like, say you're doing, like, because I'm doing OSHA, and, like, I'm doing it, but I'm not finished with it. So it's pending. So can I leave something pending? Ms. McDonald, what do you think about that? I, I would say if you haven't acquired it yet, I might omit it, but what do you think about that, Ms. McDonald? I think it's, uh, that's something up to you to decide whether you want to keep it in the resume or not. Uh, if you know that, if, like if you're close and you know you're going to get it by X date, then I would say anticipated um 2018 or something or whatever 2020 um so like if the resume i might say osha and then in parentheses anticipated um maybe may 2020 something like that but that's only i would only do that if i knew that i was gonna finish it i agree <laughs> Um, also, let's say if you only speak English, um, that's great, but I wouldn't add that to the skill section. Only add language if you speak more than one language. It's valuable, but um, you probably might want to omit that. Any other questions? There was one last question that I saved till the end because um, I think it's a good way to close out. There was a question of who do you contact to talk about your resume, fix up your resume, and all of that. Okay, so you can do two things. So I'm going to put my email in the chat. So you can reach out to me, and I can connect you with your career specialist, um, and we can figure out next steps. And in that way, we'll make sure that it's been reviewed. Then you also know, like, information about upcoming jobs and how you're going to use your resume. Um, if you also want to just look up who your career specialist is, you can also go to bostonpick.org um, and there is a section where it has all the staff information on there. Um, you can also, um, I'll also share this with Ms. McDonald, so either myself or her will reach out to you. Um, but yeah, feel free to email me and I'm happy to connect. And Ms. McDonald added the link that has all your staff's, um, all the picker career staff's number and email. Yeah, so if there's any more burning questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, the link is there so you can find out who your direct person is or if you wanna reach out to us, feel free. Thank you guys so much for participating and I hope you learned something. Um, and yeah, best of luck. Yeah, you guys are doing great. Um, and we're going to have another session again in a few minutes where we're actually going to do a resume. So if you want to come back at four, you can. Um, but yeah, this, is, this was wonderful. Um, you guys asked great questions, and we hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any other questions, um, feel free to email us or add that to the chat. Um, but thank you all. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Stay safe. Have as much fun as you can and, you know, count your blessings. <laughs>